Being able to grab objects in a virtual environment is crucial for just about every VR game out there. Whether it's being able to grab objective items such as weapons, tools, or random puzzle pieces that you may need for some kind of objective in a virtual environment, some games may even take that a step further and allow for you to grab things that you really don't need at all, such as cups or plates, or even just random hats that are sitting around. But one of the nice things about working with the VR template in Unreal Engine is that it actually provides a grab component. So in this tutorial, I wanna show you how we can actually use that grab component to be able to grab any object in our scene whether it's necessary for the game or not, and some of the very simple things that this grab component allows for you to do. But before we jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. With that, let's jump right into the video. Now let's start with where we can actually find this grab component. It's actually pretty simple to find. If you go into your content browser, you'll actually find it under VR template and blueprints, and you'll be looking for a component called grab components. It's very, very specific and honestly really easy to use. In addition to this, you'll also find a couple of other objects that actually already use this grab component if you want to see how the VR template uses it by default. These objects include the grabbable small cube and the pistol, both of which use the grab component. Now, the reason I actually mention where this is is not necessarily because you actually need to be able to open this grab component all the time, but because it's really very, very simple. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, but the grab component is really designed to do one thing, and that's grab. It's not really designed to work with any sort of VR character. It's not really designed to work with any sort of mesh hands as opposed to motion controllers. It's really the most basic, simple version of grabbing that you can possibly implement into a VR project. So being able to know where it is will offer us to make little modifications here and there. For example, we can very simply change out our try grab to change it and rather than being able to use a motion controller to grab objects, we can very simply modify this so that way we can grab with a scene component or a mesh or some other component altogether. Now let's see how we can actually use this grab component and what kind of modifications it allows for us to do by default. To do this, I'm going to real quick create a new actor that we're going to use for this example. Now in this actor, I'm gonna to put together just a really simple mesh that we can just have in this actor so that way we have something we're able to see. I'm going to quite simply just set this to a cube. Now I think this is also something very important to note as well. When you're adding in a grab component, preferably you want this to be attached to your root component or a static mesh within your actor. And the reason for this is our grab component is actually a little bit picky about what it can actually use and grab onto. It needs to be able to have some kind of parent component that it can grab onto. Since in the grab component itself, it actually references our own actor. So for this example, I'm actually setting our static mesh to the root component, and then we're going to attach our grab component onto this as well. And while there are certain circumstances where you may not need to attach this grab component to the root component, I do definitely recommend it in most situations. Once we drop in this grab component, we're honestly really all done. With that, we're able to grab onto this static mesh actor. However, I wanna take this a little bit further and I wanna show you some of the simple modifications that we can make if we wanted to, for example, change around the way that we grab objects or maybe we wanted to do a completely custom way of grabbing objects. So for this, let's go ahead and have a look at the details panel of our grab component. Let's start off with the grab type though. The grab type has four different options. We have none, free, snap, and custom. Now these all do different things depending on what you want. None will quite literally do nothing, except for under a single circumstance. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second as well. Free is the default grabbing method. And this basically is going to set up so that way our hand is going to stay in the same relative position as the way we grabbed onto our static mesh. What that means is there's going to be no snapping or anything like that. So if we grabbed our static mesh from the side, our hand is going to stay there at that same point on the side as we're moving around that static mesh. 
Right below that we have Snap, and this is going to be useful, especially for a lot of tools or weapons or things where your hands need to be placed in a specific way. The way that Snap works means that wherever our grab component is on our relative actor is going to snap to our hand. So for example, if we are using a gun, for example, we want our hand to snap to wherever the grip portion of that gun is. So in order to do this, we'd simply move our grab component to that position, maybe modify the rotation a little bit so that way our hand fits a little bit more comfortably, and we'd switch this grab type to snap. Finally, there's custom. Custom honestly just allows for you to do whatever you would like. You can not grab in any normal way and you can have a completely custom way of being able to grab onto objects. This can be useful if, for example, you want to be able to grab anywhere along a spline, or maybe you want to be able to grab at one of two specific points depending on if it's a two-handed object. This will allow for us to do that and modify the way that we grab rather than using any of the default free or snapping methods. Right below that we have our on-grab haptic effect and this should honestly be pretty self-explanatory. It'll simply apply a haptic effect to our motion controller when we're grabbing an object. Now I should also note as well that this may not work if you decide to change what type of component is grabbing an object. You may need to make some further modifications at that point to the grab component. Under the advanced section, the first one that I really want to bring your attention to is the is is held. Now I know that's a little bit confusing because uh, it's called is held. And this is honestly just a very simple true or false. What the is held does is it does exactly what it sounds like. It'll tell us if our component is currently being held or if it isn't. Now there is a single circumstance where this won't swap and that is if our grab type is set to none. If grab type is set to none, this is held value is not modified at all, meaning that you can't actually grab an object. Now there is an exception to this. If you were to set is held to true, and try to grab the grab component, you may be able to override that typical none. So definitely keep that in mind. Now the other one that I really want to bring your attention to as well is the simulate on drop. And this is one of the last uh, options that we have here in our default tab. Now you don't need to actually worry about checking this box or unchecking it usually. What this will actually do is it'll grab whatever the parent component is and using that parent component, whether or not it has physics simulating already or not, will actually determine if we need to simulate physics again. So if we already are simulating physics on our static mesh, for example, then our simulate physics will automatically re-enable when we release our actor. However, we can actually use this to modify if we want to later on disable physics for an actor. This can be useful under a couple of very specific scenarios, but under most cases, you're probably not going to end up touching this and you're probably just going to end up leaving this by default. With that, that's really most of the major details that you're going to want to mess around with. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of the details panel, we also have a couple of options for events. And the two major ones that you're probably going to want to focus on the most are on grabbed and on dropped. Now the on grabbed and on dropped events, honestly, you probably won't need if you're using a simple free or snap grab type. However, these could be very useful if you're using a custom grab type, since these two events will still run on a custom grab type. These events can also be used if you want to just add some additional functionality onto the typical free or snap grab types as well. So just keep that in mind if you ever wanted to come in here and add some additional functionality or some modifications onto these. Finally, there are three more functions that I did definitely want to bring your attention to since they're useful, especially on tools or weapons or other objects that may require some additional functionality when they're being held. In order to see these functions, you need to go ahead and jump into the event graph, grab your grab component, and then you can find these as trigger pressed, trigger released, and trigger axis. In order to actually use any of these options, you're also going to need to add in something into your class settings. And that's going to be the VR interaction BPI interface. The way that these press released and access functions work is these will actually call functions from the VR interaction BPI interface. And if you look at the interfaces section on the left hand side after you've added in the VR interaction BPI interface, you'll find trigger release, trigger press, and trigger access. 
Now, while you can call these interface events directly if you would like, this does overall just simplify the overall process and allow for us to simply store the grab component in our player, for example, and be able to call that trigger press, trigger released, and trigger access a interface event whenever we would like. And that's a simple guide to how we use the grab component in our own VR projects. Now, as I said, this is perhaps the most simplest form of grabbing that we could do. However, it offers some of the most basic and honestly most useful basic functionality that we could possibly need, meaning that it's useful in a lot of scenarios. And if we wanted to build off of it even more, we can either use the custom grab type or we can go directly into the grab component and build off of it that way. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.